Good day everybody, meteorologist Mark Muller here. What's going on this Memorial Day weekend? Are we going to see the trough cut off in the east and create unsettled conditions? Like the GFS is indicating here, a cut off low that could prolong some unsettled conditions, cooler temperatures and wet weather? Or is the Euro going to be right with a more pronounced trough, but lifting out to the northeast much quicker with much clearing conditions and ridging taking effect? For later in the Memorial Day weekend and what's going on here with the tropics it looks pretty quiet in the Atlantic but what's this down here in the Eastern Pacific I'll explain the all of the Atlantic in this in the Eastern Pacific in this edition of weather Eastern let's take a look so here's what we're looking at with our tropical update here yeah we're looking at an 80 to 90 percent chance here into the Eastern Pacific and once this develops we'll see if this does make landfall along the South Mexican coastline here and then crosses over into the Gulf of Mexico. It's way too early to get into the details of this, but I'll show you what it looks like in the models momentarily here. All right, we're going to start off with a tropical update here. We don't have too much to talk about. We do have that feature in the Eastern Pacific. I want to welcome all my new subscribers to my channel. As always, you know, the conversation's open down below if you want to post a question or comment let's take a look here this is uh this is tropics and yeah we're still kind of like benign here in the middle of the atlantic we got the high pressure system so we're keeping all these systems flowing just like this uh however you see you know the gfs has been squirrely with a lot of these systems you we know you know a week week and a half ago with that system that never materialized in the caribbean and gulf of mexico well it's materializing a system here off of you know central america and the eastern pacific so as we go in time here this is forecasting to become a pretty strong hurricane on the gfs here here we go look at that that's a pretty strong hurricane to be had there off the mexican coast and then it actually makes landfall and look at that does it try to materialize it towards the middle of next week here into the southern gulf of mexico that is pretty interesting that's pretty far out though so you know we'll have to watch it it's kind of indicating it might move in this general direction here so yeah this is something to watch here all right here we go gfs let's take a look here so we're zooming in here this is the caribbean and eastern pacific and then you see the gulf of mexico here to the north look at this here it is this is friday we're developing some sort of a low pressure system here and i'll show you this is kind of picking up on the euro and the other models as well look at this so we start to really develop this by saturday look at this we got a 992 millibar low here and as we progress this in time this becomes wow that's crazy a major hurricane it looks like and then it approaches the coastline here memorial day that is really interesting we'll have to see if this actually you know pans out uh the pattern is supportive for this to develop but to move up in a general direction like this this is pretty interesting and then it tries to you know re-develop it here into uh the southern gulf of mexico area and look at that it kind of tries to yeah this is uh this is interesting you know it, it kind of spins off several lows again one up here and one up here uh but this keep, keep in mind this is friday june 3rd by this time so you know a lot can happen between now and then and taking a look at the high resolution euro here you know we kind of show a similar path here although there it is so we have something developing there of course it's nowhere near as strong it's further west on the euro in fact it's actually off the screen here take a look at this so you know by saturday it's way over here pretty much coming off the screen but it does kind of pinwheel it a bit back towards the coastline here further west and as we take a look there it is it re-emerges it there in the southern gulf of mexico so that is pretty interesting there in itself and then redevelops it into the gulf of mexico as a pretty formidable storm here all right before i forge ahead here i wanted to show you on the euro so you can get more of a proper indication of where that storm's going to potentially make landfall here on the euro there it is that's memorial day right around just you know two in the, in the afternoon here 988 millibar low of course it is weaker than the gfs but it's still pretty formidable there and then it moves it inland and then skips it there emerging back into the gulf of mexico here for thursday of next week so you know this is pretty far out we have to watch this but it is something interesting that has blipped up here 
on our short-term to medium-term radar. So here we go for the Gulf of Mexico. There is not much to talk about. You see there's a quick westerly flow here. There's a lot of wind, vertical wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere. There is an area of showers and thunderstorms, but it is progressing to the east here. You do see there is someone that are stalling here. These are the ones you have to watch this time of year for potential development. But at the current time, I don't think conditions are favorable at the moment. So if we take a look at the rest of the Caribbean, it is clear as a bell down here. Yeah, you have those thunderstorms that develop Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, as well as Cuba during the day. But you know what? Pretty much really nice here across most of the Caribbean. So if we take a look at the whole tropical Atlantic there, there's that feature there across the north central Gulf of Mexico, not really anything to worry about. And, you know, I showed you last week there was the potential that something might linger here in the Central Atlantic. It doesn't look like anything's really happening, so to speak. And look at that. The intertropical convergence zone is very quiet. We do have some dust here coming off of Africa, so that could be an inhibiting factor. But, you know, the Cape Verde season really hasn't started, and neither has for pretty much most of the Atlantic here. All right, so here's the Western Atlantic. Wow. This is crazy. Look how warm this water is getting off the U.S. East Coast, as well as especially the north, central, and northern Gulf here, just continuing to stay pretty warm. It is interesting to note that we're actually getting cooler here in the Caribbean. You know, we've had some couple waves moving through, so this has kind of stirred up the water, but this is only a temporary cool down here. Going into Memorial Day weekend, I wanted to show you this briefly on the Euro. Take a look at this. Lots of flow here. Vorticity around this low pressure system as it spreads to the east, but look at how the euro just kind of washes it out into a trough, a more progressive trough moving to the east here. And as you can see, it pretty much kicks that out by Sunday and into Monday and builds a beautiful ridge here in the east. And here it is on the euro again. Take a look at the height anomalies. You can really see it really clearly here. Look at this by the weekend, you know, Sunday into Monday here. We're really getting in to much more look at that there, there's the telltale sign there see you get this trough out west it's going to push this ridge up like this in the east and as we head throughout the rest of next week look at that wow yeah you got a big old bomb of a low over here but look at this you got continued niceness here into the northeast so if we take a look at the GFS here, it is a bit different slightly so than the euro you can see how that pinwheels to the east by about the time of Saturday, so we're still dealing with unsettled conditions here into the northeast with this trough, but you can see how it starts to fill in a little bit, and it does start to become a little bit more progressive here on the latest GFS, kicking this out faster, so there's much more agreement that you'll be able to salvage at least 66%, if not more, of your weekend here in the northeast and mid-Atlantic, but I think it's not going to be an all-day rain event here uh, for Saturday in the northeast, which is good news. Look at that. You get High pressure dominating next week and that big old trough here in the west. And that continues throughout the rest of next week here. Take a look at the visible satellite picture. This is that low pressure system that's going to be the central theme to our forecast here across North America. It's going to become cut off for a while as it moves to the east. But both the GFS and the Euro thankfully start to kick this out. So it may not ruin your entire Memorial Day weekend. And here it is on the water vapor loop. You can see that dry air really wrapping in around it here. Lots of moisture here on the eastern side of the system. So it's pumping up a lot of tropical moisture here. And this will keep things in Clement from west to east here, at least through the mid to latter part of this week. And maybe clipping the northeast here into your Saturday. All right, so severe weather as this low heads to the east. Yes, there's going to be severe weather. And, you know, marginal here into the darker greens. But the area I'm really going to watch here is right into Ohio, northeastern Kentucky. For your Thursday, damaging wind, large hail, a good bet here. Any tornado threat? A little bit. 2% here from uh, Ohio down to the Panhandle of Florida. Hail, definitely about a 2% here, and as well as wind damage here across Ohio. Now, as we head into Friday, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. You know, initially there wasn't going to be any much severe weather with the system, but this, you know, this time of year with the daytime heating and the strong sun, you can get some pretty big thunderstorms here along these upper level lows, and some of these could contain damaging wind, large hail. We're going to watch the Binghamton area, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton down to D.C., all the way down to Raleigh and Charleston, South Carolina here. So keep an eye out. All right, so here we are. We're with the GFS on Thursday. Pretty vigorous, low beginning to cut off here. And this is the area we're going to watch for stronger thunderstorms on Thursday. 
as this heads to the east. I'll show you on the mesoscale model momentarily here. You can see that dies off throughout the night and then into Friday, daytime heating, boom. You get some of these big time thunderstorms developing here. So Friday is going to be a big day for parts of the mid-Atlantic east coast and northeast here is that upper level low you have two lows the upper level and then another low forming up north of the st lawrence river valley here and take a look at this as we head into saturday we might have a few that get a little frisky here with some thunderstorms but look how quickly that moves off to the northeast here with high pressure you're going to be able to salvage a pretty nice weekend at least for 66 percent of the weekend here into the northeast for your sunday and monday now if we head over to the G uh, the euro here high resolution euro you're going to see, take a look at this, there we go. So it's pretty much cutting off the low here Thursday as well. So there's pretty good agreement here. And showers and thunderstorms becoming very prominent here across Ohio and the Deep South. So you have that marginal to a slight risk a severe weather event here. And look at that, lining up across Ohio. And that heads to the east on Friday. Look at this. We could have a solid squall line forming here from the eastern Lake Ontario region of upstate New York all the way down through Pennsylvania, Virginia, and the Carolinas here. So this could be a big wind event here. Look at that. Let's back that up there. This is right after noon. Syracuse, Binghamton, Harrisburg, all the way down through the eastern Carolinas. Look how interesting that is. And that heads to the east throughout Saturday evening. You're still dealing with it. So Saturday might not be the best day in the northeast. If you have any outdoor plans, you might want to wait for Sunday and Monday. But look at this. We head throughout Saturday there. You have another burst of showers and thunderstorms here into the northeast for Saturday afternoon, early evening. But look how quickly that moves out. And we have high pressure really building in across the northeast really nicely here. And that stays pretty much in trench for most of next week. All right, here we go. We're going to look at the NAM 3 kilometer here. We're starting off with Thursday because Ohio... It's the big day for you heading on into Thursday. So most of the day on Thursday, it's until you get to, here we go. This is right about the time you're getting out of work. You're going to have to watch this. See this complex of showers and thunderstorms really developing here. It's coming out of Kentucky, and this could contain damaging wind, especially here into eastern Ohio come late evening towards sunset here. And that heads into the northeast throughout the night. It weakens, so we're not going to really have any severe weather throughout the night but as we get the daytime heating here we go we're well after sunrise here we're just we're getting about lunchtime here now take a look at this right around noon look what we start having here we start having showers and thunderstorms pop up here in western pennsylvania even to parts of eastern ohio here now let me go through frame by frame here for you look at that some of these there it is so we might have a line forming here and a line forming here. So we have a couple boundaries here. It's kind of a broken boundary here on the NAM 3 kilometer, which is interesting. But this kind of fills in, you know, throughout the day. Um, and then towards sunset, we start to have this congeal across the northeast. This is past the optimal daytime heating. But look at this. This is indicating throughout the night, Friday night into early Saturday morning, we'll still have thunder showers and thunderstorms developing across the northeast here. So let's take a look at the Cape here. We had throughout Thursday. There it is, pushing into eastern Ohio. Well after you get home from work here. This is where the biggest threat is for strong thunderstorms here, especially northern and eastern Ohio there. That kind of wanes on the Thursday night into Friday, but look at this. We start to get Cape here, 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram here in the northeast. So this is late afternoon into early evening. You'll have to watch that. And, of course, there it is. All right, so precipitation totals, yeah, you're going to be dealing. This is just through Friday here. Look at this in the southeast. There are some areas exceeding four inches here into parts of the Panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama, parts of southern Mississippi. And there's a large swath of one to two inches of rain, especially into the purples here. And as we head into Friday and into Saturday, that propagates into the northeast, but you almost look, there's almost like a rain shadow here. Yeah, you're still getting upwards of close to an inch in some of these purple areas, but thankfully most areas will generally be a half to three quarters of an inch of rain all right so precipitation totals yeah you're going to be dealing this is just through friday here look at this in the southeast there are some areas exceeding four inches here 
into parts of the Panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama, parts of southern Mississippi. And there's a large swath of one to two inches of rain, especially into the purples here. And as we head into Friday and into Saturday, that propagates into the northeast, but you almost look, there's almost like a rain shadow here. Yeah, you're still getting upwards of close to an inch in some of these purple areas, but thankfully most areas will generally be a half to three quarters of an inch of rain. All right, the other day, Robert Stone was starting his travels in that Dallas-Fort Worth area. You can see it's kind of hazy and foggy. Definitely there. Look, at you can't even see the blue sky. And then all the way up to Pendleton, Kentucky. You know, just making his rounds here across the eastern part of the country. You can see some kind of some hazy skies as well. Pretty nice day, it looks like, actually. Nice captures there, Robert. All right, taking a look at John here from... I-710 at Long Beach Freeway, Long Beach, California. Take a look at this. Nice captures here, John. You can see the overcast sky there off in the distance. And look at that. He's just cruising along there on the highway. So the freeway here. Um, so look at that. Nice way to get out and enjoy on a nice day. It's kind of looking overcast there off in the distance. Uh, but nice captures there, John. Keep on cruising across the country there. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York into northeast Pennsylvania. Take a look for the rest of the week. It stays nice through Thursday. It's the Friday that we have that system move in, that low pressure from the west I was telling you about. We'll have showers and thunderstorms likely up to a half an inch of rain possible as well, continuing into Friday night. You know, keep the temperatures, you know, in the upper 70s to near 80, humid, very humid conditions as well. Into Saturday, we'll have showers likely before noon and then showers and thunderstorms continuing throughout the early afternoon we might start to clear things out you know towards 4 or 5 p.m so that's the good news it'll keep temperatures down in the low to mid 70s and then look at that we clear out by sunday and monday memorial day we get pretty hot towards memorial day 88 to almost 90 and then by tuesday and wednesday we go into a big, a big heat wave well up into the 90s. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. Don't forget to go over to my Facebook page, Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern and Hurricane Northeastern. Twitter at Weather Eastern, MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. My 2022 Hurricane Outlook link is in the description down below. If you haven't already watched it, go over and watch it. It's also in the link at the end of this video. Once again, thanks for joining me. 